shit. These are highly technical golf terms. You'll use them on your very first lesson. Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to an all-new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brenda McCorkle, and Mike the Magician Crawford. What's up, buddy? What up, Brendo? How you doing this week, man? I'm good. How are those magic hands of yours? Oh, they're looking wonderful, man. Looking wonderful. I love it. Oh, you know what I don't want to see in L.A.? Is public transportation getting better. I'm one of the few people that don't want to see that. Why would you not want to see that? There's less cars on the road for you, bro. Yeah, but here's the thing. If they get all these cable cars and underwater subway systems and all this bullshit they're trying to do, there's going to be no need for buses anymore. And then people won't be able to get hit by buses, and I can't have that. (laughs) No, no, we need all the public transportation in the world because public transportation means less people actually having to drive themselves, which means more ability to watch us. Yeah, that's true. I like that. I didn't think of that. There you go, man. See, in public transportation, you can watch all the YouTube and podcasts and listen to whatever and actually pay attention if you want. Because you ain't got to pay attention to the road, bro. (laughs) (laughs) That is true. But here's the thing. It also frees up more room for those trike cars that you like so much. Bro, I saw my first set of white dudes in that the other day. I'm surprised there aren't a lot more in Cali because y'all always have good weather. See, I see them here when we have good weather. Like, you ain't going to see one in the middle. Yeah, but again, that you said True. that was like a black thing, right? I mean, like the tricked out ones when you hear somebody rolling on the street banging music is doing... Yeah. No, the one I saw was very, very white. The only way I know that they were white was because they were... Even the passenger, they were both wearing helmets. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. I in Virginia, so I think the black people wear helmets in Virginia. I think I live in the Commonwealth state, man. So there's a lot of laws. Yeah, they they crack down around here, bro. No, I don't think <laughs> so, you'd need to in uh, in Cali. You don't need to wear helmets unless you're trying oh, to be a goober. Yeah. Oh no, I think it's a mandate in Virginia, and um, they definitely you definitely better buy that law because if you black, guess what? They're looking for a reason to pull you over. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure, dude. So, so you better wear your helmet if it's part of the rules, bro. But yeah, they're nice, man. I don't understand how you don't like them. They're not they're nice. They're so well. stupid. They look they like, dude. Country they country well all day. They look like one of those toys you get at Target for like a dollar that you like. Oh, I'll throw this in my kid's stocking. Like this piece of shit looking car. That's why it's a dollar. It just oh, looks man. stupid. I don't know. I don't care for it. I don't care for like how they drive like on the road like a car because you get an accident in that thing. It's you're over. It's, it's a wrap, buddy. That thing is but a like, glorified razor scooter, man. That thing is a piece yeah, of shit. But like off to the <laughs> side, maybe local city streets, stuff like that. Yeah, but I seen a dude on like three ninety five and one. I'm like, bro, that's a bold move right there. Yeah, see, <laughs> I like, see, right, I right even you. I even understand them in. Like Southern California traffic, because if you're on the 405, you're like, listen, I don't want to be on a motorcycle where I got to balance myself. And uh, if you're not one of the people that would cut through the lanes, you know, like if you're just chilling, like, all right, I could kind of see that. But you got to be like black or 65. It doesn't work. You got to be black or old. That's black folk shit. BFS, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) It just is. Hey, look, I'm not going to argue with you, man, because I know a whole bunch of my homies want one, and we and they're going to get one. I'm not personally ever going to get one because I don't got no, like, side road to ride on, even though I would. <laughs> see, and I can see you. On the highway. But those have, don't they have the one wheel in the front, or is the one wheel in the back? I don't even remember on those stupid you things. You can get them either way. See, but, I would um, think if there's one I'm wheel in, in, in the, the back and the power was in the front, that might be fun to do in, like, an open parking lot. Like, to go bananas in there, but other than that, I don't know. It's just a glorified bumper car. Seems silly. No, uh, they're nice, bro. 
I don't know. Maybe you'll change my mind. It's the Crocs of wheels, dude. Like, I just don't get it. I don't understand how you don't like Crocs either. Stop, but, stop oh. it with the Crocs. Crocs little, are fucking stupid. Digress. Crocs are the greatest, <laughs> greatest thing ever made. No, no. They, they're awful. They're Just awful. Oh, by the way, by the way, I thought they were like fifteen dollars. I thought they were so cheap. They're like expensive pieces of shit. No, they're they're hard. It's like comfortable hard plastic shoes. How amazing is that? Oh, it's the worst. Do you like Toms? By the way, speaking of uh, smoke, blowing smoke up your ass shoes. I don't have Toms. I don't own Toms. I would wear Toms though, but I don't own. So check this out. So my wife. War Toms back in the day. We went she recent. Don't wear anymore? I don't think. Toms? I don't know. I just don't think that she's been wearing. I don't know. I don't know why, but she just stopped wearing them or something. But we, I went to. Uh, we went to go get shoes for the kids a while ago or something, and this just sparked in my memory. Like Toms, when you go to buy them, their whole deal was, you know, you buy a pair of shoes, they give a pair of shoes to an underprivileged person somewhere or something like that. So in the shoes now, in their little tag, they write the original charity shoe or some bullshit like that. Like, they can't even let other people enjoy charity. They're like, no, 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 we're the best at it. I'm like, fucking, isn't that kind of <laughs> one step forward, two steps back for you, Tom? You fucking yes. arrogant piece of shit. <laughs> I'm cursing a lot in the beginning, but I don't know why. That's I think it's because of the intro productive. clip. <laughs> <laughs> Start off with cursing. It set me off. We're only six minutes in. I got to cool out, yeah, bro. <laughs> this is kind of counterproductive. Like, you don't tell people when you're doing stuff out of the kindness of your heart. But, hey, whatever. Yeah, like, I'm that's the to. worst backhanded advertising I've ever seen. Like, hey, come support us because we originally like charity. Not like these other fuckheads that like it now. Like, okay. Whatever you say, Tom. It's a marketing tool, man. What do you want to oh. do? Anyway, maybe I'll stop cursing if I talk about funnier, lighter things. So I did, uh, there's a golf tournament. I say golf is back. So there was, Tiger's tournament was at the Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades, beautiful Southern California. I happened to go this Friday. It was one of those things where I was fortunate enough to have some tickets available. And I wasn't sure if I was going to go. And then at the last minute, I was like, you know what? Kids are handled. Let's go. So um, I ended up headed down there on Friday. So they have it's a smaller golf course. So they have the groups tee off at two separate times. So there's like a morning group and then an afternoon group. And I kind of decided mid-morning I was going to go. So I ended up driving down for the afternoon group, which means I didn't catch too much traffic on the way down there. I ended up getting there at like noon. Um, but here's the deal. So I had, I was like, I always try and maneuver my way and, like, you know, play aloof until you can kind of start a conversation with somebody and then see if you can get what you want. So I drove straight up to the front gate as if I owned the place. They're like, you know, like where the players would go in and shit. Like, I drove right up to that gate because it's halfway through the day. They don't give a shit, really, security. They're kind of like, oh, whatever, people are just leaving. So I drive up and I'm chatting with security. Dude ends up. would never do that. Why would you never do that? Because that's what the security and the police are, and we don't even want to have the conversation with them, and we ain't going to be able to talk to them into doing anything. But keep going. So, well, I, funny enough, is I have a story about security and police. So I, I go up, this nice older dude, and he's like, hey, what, you know, where are you, you, you know, going to go park? And I'm like, I don't have anything, but I know that there's parking over at the middle school which is like a mile up the road on sunset so my aunt happens to be a teacher at that school so i know that every year they park you know they load up the school with cars and they have shuttles that go back and forth so i was just like hey man you know i don't know there's like i'm a teacher over at the school and then you know there's no parking so they told me come over here just play like an idiot whatever and he's like all right, man, I got you. So he gives me, hooks me up with a parking pass. So I just drive right back to the school. <laughs> this like $80 parking pass. Drive right back to the school. <laughs> get out, you know, park, do my thing. Um, you know, I'm walking through and they have security at, you know, like these little metal detectors. And then you go get on the shuttle. So shout out to my girl, Aisha, who was at security, who was having a good time with me. So I go to walk through. There's this black dude, younger, maybe like 25, 26 years old. 
He's in the middle of the day. It's basically his shift's over because everybody came for the morning. Like, nobody's really showing up in the afternoon. So they're just kind of dicking around, whatever. So my man wants to fuck with me. So I, like, take all my shit out of my pocket, walk through, and he's like, oh, it went off, man. I'm like, come on, dude, you serious? And then he's just like, nah, man, it went off. I'm like, listen, dude, I know you got nothing better to do. So I called him out. I'm like, I got, I know you got nothing better to do than fuck with rich white people all day. But, bro, I haven't got anything. And he's, like, laughing, and he's like, no, 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 just go back through, go back through. It's all good. I'm like, you want me to take off my belt? Like, what do you want, dude? He's like, no, 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 it's all good. So I'm busting his chops. I walk back through it. He's like, I was just messing with you, dude. I'm like, I know you were messing with me. That's why I was saying, like, are you really going to make me do this again? And so my girl Aisha's laughing at him, whatever. And I'm like, dude, fucking security and police always fucking with me or whatever. And they kind of, like, double-checked me. and like, wait, police mess with you? I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, I'm like the amoebic chameleon, dude. Like, I, I can fit in everywhere. I've uh, Like, trust me, I've got these experiences, too. So then he's like, nah, man. So then we're all sitting there chatting, like kind of goofing off for a few minutes. And he's like, nah, dude, here, let me show you. It'll go off no matter what. So he goes to show me, like, go back in line because now we're all buddies. He's got a watch on that's like, I, I can't even describe this thing. It's like, it's so heavy because it's so <laughs> large. And Aisha goes to my man and she goes, hey, you got to take that off? And he's like, nah. And he just walks through and goes, see, it went off. And I'm like, you didn't fucking prove anything to me, dude. You just walked in with metal and go, see, it goes off when you walk through with metal. I'm like, were you trying to tell me your watch was plastic? Like, I don't get what you were trying to show me here, dude. But whatever it was, it didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not like you had a good time before you even got into Dude, before we even got in. So then I'm like, okay, we're all yucking it up. And then so I go to walk over to the shuttle. Shuttle's already got two people sitting on it in the front. And they've been there the whole time I was farting around with these guys. So I get on, sit in the seat, and sit in there for like a minute. And then one of the security people comes up like, hey, you got to go? And the guy's like, it's not full. He's and the security's like, well, take them. Like it's not their fault. It's not full. It's all. It's like the second half of the day. Like what do you expect? They're not going to be coming in droves. Like get the hell out of here. But the driver was like fighting him on it. Like, like I don't drive for three people. And the guy was like, you better get your ass out of here, bro. So we go on the shuttle. I'm like, all right, I'm not driving cool. for three people even, man. But we gotta wait for at least five. Like I have a five person. But listen, dude, the shuttle started at like six thirty in the morning. At this point, it's like twelve thirty, and the thing's over at like four thirty. It's like we're we're all, we're second half of the day. Everybody who's gonna go that way is there. The only thing the shuttles need is to bring people back to their cars. At this point, really, outside of the occasional straggler like myself. That's the point. I don't want to go over there and have a, a busload full of people when I can just be like taking my time, chilling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> would take the three, is what you're saying. <laughs> huh? You would take the three. No, no, no. I'm not trying to move until there's like five. I don't want a full bus, but I'm going oh, like okay. five. That way I got a less amount of people. Because I know when I go over there to that side, I'm going to have a bus full of people because they all need to come back. But if I'm not over there, I'm not gonna bring nobody back. If I'm over here, because that's how shuttles work, they just go there, come back, go there, and come back. So yeah, I'm I think this dude was happy people. chilling in the shade. He didn't want to do shit. There you go. And then he's that's like, cool. you know, sign like, "Good looking people tip." I'm like, whatever, bro. I'm comfortable. You didn't want to bring me here, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so that dude, I get it. I literally walk in, walk in. I take 30 steps walking up the fairway, like away from the green towards the tee box and a ball whew, whizzes by me, like almost hits me within five feet of me. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? They saw you. They I'm like, podcast, okay. They wanted to take you out. So my man, Gin, somebody you said something bad about on our podcast and they saw you walking in, bro. No, I don't even know who this dude was, but he came real close to hitting me. And then, actually, funny enough, he came, like, five feet from hitting me because it was, like, it almost hit somebody but went over their heads. And then I kind of saw something whiz by me but, like, real quick bounced and then rolled, like, 20 yards. So I was like, oh, okay, I doubled back to where the ball was because I'm like, I got to see who hit this fucking thing. 
So then we walk back, and then there's this other chick that's like, you know, with a couple of guys, and they're like, oh, if you tell them that hit you they'll give you a ball they'll sign a ball or something like that so she's like oh it didn't hit me but it like grazed my water bottle and it's like motherfucker that's a water uh, metal water bottle like we would have heard it that thing would have ricocheted like whatever dude like people are just so nasty so he ends up signing his glove and fucking giving it to this chick and i'm like i'm the one that almost lost my life give me your water bottle or something like lady you owe me something oh god so then i was like okay I need to get my bearings. I almost just got hit by this ball. I don't even know where I'm going yet. So I was like, kind of walk towards the middle. And then I'm like, okay, ninth green. I saw that my guy Morikawa, who I put some money on this weekend, this past weekend, was he just made, uh, he was six under through six holes. So I'm like, okay, he's on seven. Let me park it at the ninth green. So I'll let him catch up and then I'll follow him for the rest of the, the back nine or whatever. So fun, uh, luckily enough, the two groups ahead of him was the featured group, the one that they show on TV and stuff. So it just so happened to where I got to see the feature group come through and then see my guy come up through. And then I just threw out the rest of the day, skipped the tee box and just went to like each shot ahead. That way I wasn't walking with the crowd. I was just one step ahead of the crowd. So that worked out really well. But I sit on the ninth green, get my little area by myself, like 10 feet off the, the rope. Um, and to the right of me, there's a gaggle of girls and a couple guys sitting in front of them. So clearly this was like one, the guy and his friend, because UCLA is right there. So there's a ton of college kids here. So it's like the guy and his friend, we're going to go. One of them has a girlfriend and she's like, well, I'm not going unless my friends go. And then so three, you know, they ended up going, so it was three chicks, two guys. You know, they were just there for day drinking and sun tanning, which is fine by me. I don't give a shit. That's but I'm there for, baby. So then <laughs> we're all just sitting, chilling, whatever. Then, like five minutes in, some kid, like 20-some-year-old kid, comes rolling down the hill. Like rolling, barrel roll on purpose. Rolls into these chicks the Riviera. at Riviera Country Club. Rolls into these <laughs> chicks, like lays there for a good like 10 seconds, and they're kind of like peeking behind him, like, what the fuck just happened? Oh, and like, I'm kind of like, oh, this dude's hammied, rolled down the hill, <laughs> and is getting his bearings back. But then he pops his head up and is like, pats them on the back, and is like, ha ha ha, sorry. Hey, make sure you put that in slow mo. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this dude is TikToking at fucking Riviera. Cause, I mean, I hope that wasn't the way he was trying to hit on these girls. But he number one, like, clearly. how do you think that's appropriate to do to people? You obviously picked girls because you thought it'd be funny and they wouldn't do anything. But also, like, these dudes didn't even fucking do anything, didn't say shit to the guy. They kind of turned around like, whatever. And I'm like... What the? F How is nobody saying anything to this guy? Like, what a piece of shit! And at a golf course, like, are you kidding me? Like, that's how clever you are. You can roll down a hill. That's your big thing. Come on, dude, be more creative. This freaking dipshit. You know, and these kids probably don't give them one shit about that golf tournament. They're just there to TikTok and get famous, baby. It's so stupid. But then again, like the guys that these girls were with. Are also the kind of guys that seem to be like intimidated by other fellows. You know what I mean? Like they make their girlfriend kiss them in front of other people because they're they're insecure. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. they see him checking out some other dude, they're like, hey, come give me a kiss. <laughs> Can't be the protector being intimidated by other fellows. No. <laughs> oh man. So that then ain't, that ain't gonna work. So then I saw these guys in a grown up form. So I'm following Morikawa more on the back nine. I think we're at like hole like 13 or something like this. And, you know, I always tried to go up the fairway and I'm either right in front of a tree, right behind a tree, somewhere where I got a little blockage to where I can duck on cover if I need to. So I'm standing next to this dad and his two boys, two young boys. And he's eating. They're, they're all eating, whatever. And we hear four... And the dad, whose kids are standing right next to him, 
pulls a Joey Triviani and like turns, ducks, covers his chicken wrap, and his kids are just standing on the wings of him uncovered. Like <laughs> he was saving his wrap. And then me and this old dude next to me was like, hey kids, don't tell your mom your dad sacrificed you for his sandwich. <laughs> That's me. If you're of age to be out there with me, then you better know the duck, buddy. His kids were like six and eight. They were children, children. They should still know to duck. <laughs> they did, but their dad okay. did not protect them. <laughs> I wouldn't have been. So I then he got so embarrassed that they walked away. Like they left their spot and walked. I was like, oh, dude, it wasn't that bad. Like it was just an honest mistake. You were <laughs> caught up in your eating. It wouldn't have been a mistake for oh, me. I definitely shit. am doing the same thing. They should know the duck. I brought you to a golf tournament. If a ball is coming your way, duck. Oh, know? so funny. And so if he's going to get you a sign ball and glove, you might want to go ahead and just take one for the team, buddy. Not <laughs> with those soft little noggins. No way, man. That's a dent you don't undo. I'm just what? saying. I don't know. Like a soft head, you catch a golf ball to the head, that's going to be a concave indent in your skull cavity, bro. It's going to put some pressure points on your brain cavity. And uh, Six and eight, they got plenty of time to, to let that un undent. Mm, okay. Yeah, you get CTE now. when you're eight and see how that works out for you. I got these 35-year-old dudes that are... Whacking people and fucking <laughs> I think, I think losing consciousness while they're CTE, driving. <laughs> it will take a little bit more for CTE. Uh, I don't think you understand how that works. Have you ever had a concussion? Yeah, but they say it's something that happens over time. Six and eight ain't enough time. Yeah. How many concussions have you had, do you think? Maybe one. I ain't no concussion guy. I don't play contact sports, bro. And you contact me, I'm going to contact you with these. Yeah. <laughs> so, Good old fisticuffs. <laughs> we don't do no contact. There's no need for anybody to contact me hard enough to make me have a concussion. So, yeah. I've, well, I've concussion. only had, like, I, I don't know that I've had a concussion. I've always just said I had my bell rung, but I, I pro <laughs> like, probably, like, yeah, concussed. probably. But I think I've maybe had, like, four or five in my day, just from like, you know, play like, I yeah, I don't know, playing football and shit, just like going hard and running in, like just playing touch football, but like running hard to catch the, you know, ball's got to get picked, Mike. That's all I'm saying. I'm a free ra a free Roman safety. That's what I do. I'm not mad at you, sir. I'm just saying I was never that. I was not. I've never been to lay it all on the line like that. Oh. <laughs> That's the only way I do shit. That's why I get concussions in touch football. <laughs> By the way, I was like 20-something when that happened. <laughs> protect myself at all the time. I'm like a boxer, man. Once uh, the bell rings, the bell, my bell is waking up every morning. After that, it's protect yourself at all the time until you go to sleep at night, bro. That's the uh, bell ding. What, let me ask you something. Is it just... Is it just the constant need to be involved in what's going on where every single time, like at a baseball game, somebody hits a, a ball in the air or like when I was at the Riviera Country Club, like somebody hit a, a shot and it was like, ooh, that's a great shot. And like, dude, he flew the green by like 15 yards. What are you talking about? Or like, like in an MLB stadium, it was like, oh, it's like, dude, he didn't even have to go to the warning track for that fly out. Like, what, <laughs> like just, you know, everybody wants to like jump in on the action. It's like, dude, why don't you kind of see where it's going to go first? Like, what the yeah, fuck? The, He's not even done with his follow through. <laughs> you know, people are calling it out like, bro, you ain't a fucking commentator on Sports Center. There's a reason. You don't know what you're watching. It's just what people are built to do, man. That's all. I know. But it'd be the most fools. I hate the whole home run thing when people It's the worst. Say, yeah. Why yeah. can't you do that 12 times a game? Like, how much? That well, must dude, when I, I'm a giant, you know me, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, and my wife's a Dodgers fan. And back in the day, before we had kids, when I was much more wild and reckless, um, Dude, when we went to the games, like not all, I would wear Giants gear if they were playing the Cincinnati Reds. I didn't give a shit. That was my team. But 
I was also kind of the antagonizer to where, like, when that would happen for the Dodgers, everybody's like, oh! As soon as they caught it and everybody sat down, I'd stand up, yeah! <laughs> Fuck you guys. But I do it as, <laughs> I do it as, not like, be, when I would sit down, down I'd be like, hey, everybody, I'm not going to curse, but I am going to root against the Dodgers, just so you know, it's all in good fun. That usually would last till about the sixth inning when the beers were hit, and then it's like, fuck that guy, and I get shit thrown at me. (laughs) All my buddies turned on me. And also, it's like, if we were sitting in the middle, I didn't have the same deal with the people up the road, so anytime I was walking up, it was like fucking danger zone. It was like, all right, Dallas, you walk ahead of me, and then I'll take the shrapnel. I don't give a fuck. But. Yeah, see, that's why I don't. That's why I don't go because I'm not taking strapping. I'm trying to throw somebody down the fucking bleachers. I'm like, you're not just disrespecting me because I root for another team. See, I'm not going for that. Yeah. I would, like, what the? You're a good guy though. That which hey, which by the way, I always had a strategy though. Like, if anybody like, because normally if you're attacking from an elevated position, especially if you're striking somebody, like. You're gonna dominate them, even if they do kind of. If you if you catch them, you got that much more force coming. But that also means that if I'm on the down low coming up, your momentum. All I got to do is just fucking help you out, and your ass is flying, bitch. Bro, You're gone. Man, that's what I be thinking about. Like I be thinking about catching a straight murder charge. And it's <laughs> it's self defense. If they swing, and all I do is assist them out of my way. Fucking if you break your face on the stairs, tough shit, baby. I just got to deal with all the other people. Like, how many more people between you falling and the exit at the tunnel do I have to run through because they're going to try and whoop my ass? <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I get it, man. But I'm telling you, I'll be trying to finish. Yeah, that throwing stuff. And, and see, all I go to is, I mean, I live in, you know, I'm a Cowboys fan. I live in D.C., so it's straight away games if I go see my team. So And, like, we're arch rivals. So I'll be like, yo, look. I'm just trying to chill and get out of here safely because I don't want to have to get jumped or I don't want to have to like try to kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> that sporting event situation is is a wild situation. It really is. Like it's controlled chaos is all it is. The fact that more yeah. shit doesn't go Semi wrong controlled. is pretty remarkable. And that's what I'm saying. Like it's semi controlled because it ain't like really police all in the stand. Like, you can't play man on man defense with forty five thousand yeah. people. And like I said, like the people that know this could probably get into full out brawls if they want. Ain't no cops up there. Bro. Well, that was the other thing. It's like security is like you know hmm. they, they work at Walmart on the side. You know, like they're yeah. fucking doing anything. And they're securing the people that are important, which are in the first two rows. Like you have the yeah. Next. Y'all have to fight all y'all. <laughs> yeah. If you're in row G or up, you're fucked. The only the only kind of defense you have from security is that pen they carry around to pop beach balls. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all want to fight me and kill each other, by all means, I ain't not getting in the middle of that. Oh, dude. But <laughs> so, bleed. Talking about, yeah, security, security, my ass. Oh, dude. So, <laughs> anyway, so that was, <laughs> so I did have a great time at Riviera. Getting out of there, you know, was, I ended up leaving after Morikawa was on like 15 because it was like four o'clock and I wanted to get out of there and hit. It's already going to be traffic on sunset on a Friday. So I wanted to get the hell out of there, you know, before it turns into real traffic. Like, it's just, it's awful, dude. I used to have to, uh, LA traffic is amongst the worst. Well, especially Sunset it. because it's a one-way street and it's windy and and it's just there's like you go stop to stop on every light and there's no way to ditch out north or south except for one or two side streets. But you have to pretty much be going directly to where it dumps out. Otherwise, you're going a, a long way around for no reason. You're like seven miles, forty-eight minutes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, dude! I used to have to drive that all the time you when I installed the five to the one hundred to the one hundred one. One hundred one, oh, yeah. man, you're done. Yeah, you're when done. I did appliances, I had to drive that all the time in the big twenty six footer trucks and shit. That was always fun parking in those steep old driveways and crap. But also, I used to have to deliver um, paychecks when I worked for a concrete company. I worked in the office, and all of the work was on in like Malibu and Pacific Palisades and everywhere off like Sunset Boulevard in these hilly areas. Well, at the time, I was driving a 91 
LX Mustang that I had no business driving. It did like 13s on the track or something like that, which is apparently very good. But here's the other thing. So I had this machine that I had no business driving. I didn't have a license at the time. <laughs> it was like illegal as shit to drive. Tinted windows, the whole nine yards. And driving up in all these hills, I didn't have reverse. My reverse went out. So for like two months, once a week, I was delivering. <laughs> How could you possibly drive with no reverse? Bro? I would have to park up a hill and put it in neutral, e-brake it, <laughs> and then roll backwards. Or I would have to gun it and have enough momentum to, like, I used a bunch of people's driveways, which they didn't care for. Because I'd, like, have to turn up, up into a driveway to get enough rollback to, like, straighten out and come back down. Because all these are one-way streets. It was, a, it was a nightmare, bro. That was a that was a hell of a time to be alive, Brendan. Dude, it was intense. It was intense. But still got it done, nonetheless. I couldn't afford to fix the fucking transmission. What are you going to do? You get it done. You're still here. Oh, I, I understand. I'm just That's right, It's a whole time to be alive. I used to have a drive a car with, without a Cadillac converter, so I understand going 30 miles an hour on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like you're driving a 5.0 Mustang. <laughs> Bro. But really, and you're just in a Nissan Altima. Every day. I could have just took city streets, but I would go the highway every day with it and floor it, knowing that it was only going to go 30 to 5. <laughs> like, whatever. Whatever works, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. So then my weekend also continued into a little bit more of a fabulous thing. So uh, my wife and I celebrated our 14th dating anniversary this past weekend. Uh, so we ended up. Thank you. Congratulations, my guy. Thank you. Um, so years. Yeah, we've done time. That's for sure. We have done time mm -hmm. together. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we went. Anyway, we were just you know tried to do something new. So we ended up uh, just going downtown LA, which surprisingly enough, it was never our spot. Even though we both lived in LA for pretty much our whole lives. Um, so we ended up. We were gonna stay down there go to a dinner and a movie. So we end up going to dinner at downtown at a steakhouse. And uh, what I ended up doing, because I didn't bring anything with me, any of my nefarious items, so I just got up on my app, went ahead and delivered something. So I was like, we're leaving the <laughs> hotel. I'm like, okay, we'll be at the restaurant in like 10 minutes. Let me hook this up. I was like, just meet me out in front of Capitol Grill. So, <laughs> so we go to dinner, you know, we sit down, take our order, whatever. And I get a text like, Hey, I'm outside. So I go walk out and the, I see the valets like talking to him like, Hey, you can't park here or whatever. And like drug dealers know the people that are looking for him. So I walk out and he like points at me like, this is definitely my guy. <laughs> and the valet is just kind of like whatever dude and like kind of pissy but walks away so i walk up to the guy we make the exchange or whatever which by the way i had to send him a selfie like since when did drug dealers become the people that are afraid of the consumers like the the paradigm has shifted there to where now they're like hey for my protection i need to know who you are i had to do that all the way back when i lived there so i'm sure i know have to do it but now. usually the drug dealers aren't supposed to have your information and you're not supposed to have theirs i remember the, fi I remember the time i thought rocco was gonna like chew the dude <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> yeah when he came i was uh, when i was working from home and i ordered something and he came and he was coming to the garage like and i'm like bro you can't walk up to this garage like he will be <laughs> Stay in your car, bro. Like, if you come too close, he won't run out of the street to get you. But you come up to this garage, he'll get he you. He can bro. get you. So, like, stay in your car until I come out here. I come to you. You don't come to me, my guy. <laughs> like, we have a dog for a reason. He'll get you. That's right. <laughs> He's not a bad dog. He's not a big dog. But you cannot come in his house, buddy. The same <laughs> as us. Yeah. We're nice and docile, but if you fuck with us, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Something like that. Not dead. Not dead. But no, you might be dead. But maybe. I'm going to try to get you out of here. To You're going out one way or another, sometimes <laughs> just with a little string and a name tag on your toe. <laughs> Either way, you ain't coming in. Not invited. 
Not like vampires, you're not allowed in unless you're invited. There you go, man. <laughs> oh shit! So then we, I do the drug deal, and then the valet dude, he's just like kind of looking at me, like at first, like really, dude, and then I just did it with like, yeah. And he's like, all right, that's a good move. <laughs> like, fuck it. <laughs> and then he gave me kind of like a what's up on the way out, which was nice. So anyway, so we do dinner. We kind of ran through dinner, which was cool. Um, and then we went up to Alamo Draft House, which is a movie theater. It's kind of like, it's one of those fancy movie theaters, but it's not super fancy, which I like. But they serve food and drinks and stuff. They like serve food and drinks and down. stuff like that. But it's not the kind of recliner that I'll fall asleep in. Like, it's not too comfortable. Mm. Now, I'll fall in the regular movie sleep, so any type of recliner, you can count me night-night, buddy. I know, dude. That's why I can't ever go to the movies by myself, because I just it's a waste. I fall asleep. I need to go to the movies with somebody. Otherwise, I take a nap. doesn't matter what it is. Born Ultimatum, snooze fest. You know what I mean? Like, just doesn't matter. Born so, Ultimatum? You could go to sleep doing Born You couldn't go to sleep doing Born Ultimatum. Within 15 minutes, I, walk, I was asleep and then woke up two hours later to the credits and was like, that was a long movie. Bro, oh, I bro! Can't believe you I have doing Born Ultimatum. I can't believe that. That's like a good, really good movie. I know. I, I know. go to sleep in the movies too, but not doing really good movies. I uh, see. You that's know what movie like I slept at like literally like immediately like the, the credits came. I don't even know why I agreed to go see Titanic the movie. because you wanted no, to feel Nacho a boob. Libre, bro. Nacho, Nacho Libre. libre. <laughs> Sometimes men wear stretchy pants. Yo. No, it was a girl, man. Clearly, a girl talked me into going to see Nacho Libre, and I went with her. And I wasn't, I was, I, I, didn't even, I don't even remember like the, the story and the plot. I don't remember anything. I was asleep before I can learn who Nacho Libre was. Like, I was out. So, I probably was slobbing and everything. Like, I was out, out. That might be the last movie I seen in the movie theater, the Nacho Libre. I don't know. It came out like long, fifteen years ago, twenty five <laughs> years ago. I don't know how long. It's been a that's long how, time. That's how old I am, bro. You see these grays, buddy? Bro, I got bright grays all of, like that's my new shade. Even though I, my, I can't find a barber to save my life, dude. Like, bro, I'm paying top dollar to come home and touch shit up. What's up with that? Like, literally, the line of my beard was off by, like, almost a half inch. Listen, like, you know what, what is I'm, going on you're here? Just, you're, too, you're too nice, Connor. Okay? You have to just tell them that and make them fix it on site. I, I don't know. I told Good the guy. I was like, listen, you, this isn't doing. your audition, but it's basically your audition. I need to find somebody that I can come to. I came to somebody else that was in this establishment last time. I didn't really like him. He's too racist for my taste. But I do like your shop, so I came to you. So if you can do a good job, I'll get your number. We'll hook this up as a regular deal. And he's like, yeah, I got you. And I'm like, yeah, you got me looking fucking stupid. That's what you got me, dude. Ugh. He probably think you'll be back tomorrow because he didn't tell him that he like was trash. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be, but you're a nice guy. So you here's the other thing, don't, though, don't is change, don't change like, your stripes, Tiger. But I'm just saying, I didn't really, I also didn't really, I didn't really see it until I got in the car. Like he showed me while I was there, and I was just kind of like back and forth, and and then I, I saw when they do that, bro. Yeah, like I know as other people in here, wait, I'm not about to sit here and glam in the mirror. Like it's gonna be a quick thing, and then you realize stuff when you get in the car. But I've been going to my barber for 15 plus years now, so I don't have to worry about those type of things. Yeah. But. My barber doesn't hand me a mirror no more. Like he knows better than that. But yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. So anyway, Alamo Draft House. Barber, we went and saw uh, Licorice Pizza, which is that must be a kid movie because you took the kids. No, it was just us. I'm not taking kids on a anniversary date night. But so, what is Licorice? Pizza, licorice bro? Pizza. Is a movie. It's actually nominated for Best Picture, but then again, so is like eleven other pieces of mediocrity. Um, that's unfair. I haven't seen all of them and won't for that reason. But basically, it's like a love letter to the Valley, the eight one eight where I live. It's set in the seventies, and it's kind of like an ode to the Valley. So, uh, licorice pizza was like a slang term for vinyl records back in the day because the black looks like licorice the bumps and then it's in the shape of a pizza mm. spoiler alert 
nothing to do with a record or record store in the entire movie. <laughs> so don't be hanging out for that one. And by the way, you know who told me that? My eight-year-old. Granted, he got the information from his grandma, but he was like, oh, licorice pizza, you know what that is? And we're like, no, do you? <laughs> it's like, yeah, grandma told me. Like, oh, okay. Well, grandma and grandpa that's grew up you, in the valley, though. So yeah, that makes that's sense. That's how you get, that's why he's so intelligent, man. He pays attention to what people tell him. That's, that's being smart. That's, 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 that's true. So then we were, so <laughs> in our downtown excursion, like the restaurant was only like, you know, three quarters of a mile away from the hotel. And then the uh, movie theater was like another three quarters of a mile, but it was away from our hotel. So that means we had to truck it back like a mile and a half um, back to the hotel at, you know, fucking one in the morning in downtown LA or whatever. So that was probably like a half mile too far that I was comfortable with, you know, walking with my wife. I was fine, but like, yeah, it's a little too far. Um, you know, you got to cross a couple weird areas in there. So I used to work down there all the time. I used to be down there all the time. I'm also not afraid of riffraff, so I speak their language. It's not a big deal. But yeah, what, was it like a close? Oh, it was a move then. Why do you just have her swipe then you go get the car, bro? Because we parked originally, we parked at the hotel and we had to change our reservations because we were a little bit later than we anticipated because we dropped off the kids with my sister down in Orange County. So it was like we had to rearrange our dinner plans in order to keep the movie time. So we ended up going to a different place that was close to the hotel. We're like, ah, fuck it, let's just walk. That's how that happened. Oh, so you were walking back to the hotel, not to the car. Yeah, to the hotel. We walked all oh. the way back. So, sure. you know, it, it wasn't that bad. Luckily, she was, you know, felt good enough with me because I had been downtown a bunch of different times at all, you know hours of the day and night multiple times and you know she i think she felt okay but it was a little bit long and you could see a little extra shit in there speaking of which we almost stepped in human shit so that was cool it was like within the first (laughs) we didn't though but within the first quarter mile it was like you could see that somebody slept in it and then did like a slip and slide in it (laughs) so nasty (laughs) oh there dude i worked with a guy that reminds me back in the day i worked with a dude he was working with my dad actually um at the glass company and my pops came back to the shop one day i was working in the front of the office and he came back from a call and he's like you will never guess what happened so they pull up to a call i think it was at a school like to to fix a window or something like that and his helper got out and steps in shit like right out the curb and is like ah damn it and then he gets out onto the curb and realizes it's human shit so then he's like okay okay we gotta go like throws his shoe away so now he's got one shoe on so maestro had to drive him to mervin's that was a real place back in the day Drives into a Mervin, so this dude hopped in with one shoe and walked out with two because he had to go buy a new pair of shoes in the middle of the day. <laughs> that is disgusting to have to actually step in human shit. Uh, holy know, freaking fecal matter. That. Uh, that so gross. But that's the only move, right? You say what? That's the only move. Or do you take off both shoes? Do you take out both shoes or, and just walk in in your socks and be like, I need shoes? Or do you use one shoe, your one good shoe? Well, the type of shoe that I wear, I'm taking my shoe home and cleaning. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, with but human pay, shit on it? Yeah, I pay a lot of money for my shoes, bro. <laughs> I don't pay a lot of money for my mm-hmm. shoes. And my wife was like, when we got back to the room, she's like, we should probably wipe down the bottom of our shoes. Like, because we definitely walked around it. And I was just like, yeah, we probably should. And then I just set them down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I got shoes that I paid two, two fifty for. So, yeah, bro, I'm not just... Five pairs of shoes. Crocs does not equal one pair of good shoes, Mike. <laughs> Would you yeah, wash bro. off shit on your Crocs? No, if those are 40, 50 bucks. Like, they can stay out there. You I didn't realize you could burn stuff. money like that, Mike. Damn. I couldn't burn Even money. with all your gadgets like or that. whatever it is? That ain't it ain't even about burning money like that. Like it's just 
that's that's not worth wiping shit. Like I've already burnt the money. There's those are not wiping worth wiping shit off. Who knows when I'm gonna go buy a new pair? Because you know I ain't rich. But like fifty dollars is not worth like worth wiping shit off. I but, agree. That's pretty you know, pretty ridiculous, bro. Two hundred and fifty dollar uh, Jordans. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to clean those somehow. I might have to hard spray them from a distance initially. And then we're going to have to toothbrush those or something. We're going to have to get those clean, buddy. Sorry. All right. (laughs) All right. Well, speaking of nothing, uh, did you watch any of the shitbag Winter Olympics? No. Good. No. Not one second. They're awful. I will say I did get sucked into the figure skating a little bit because my wife likes the figure skating, the women's individual. Um. And that happened to have a ton of controversy in it, so that was actually kind of fun to to watch because I was like, oh, I'm not going to watch this. And she's like, actually, I heard about this. You might want to watch this. And I was like, okay, let me know when the last four go. So I, will, I do want to say, though, and this is absolutely in a supportive way, Johnny Weir is officially the gayest dude of all time. Do you know who Johnny Weir is? The figure skater? X-figure skater? Yeah. Dude, that guy... Fell ass backwards into the perfect unicorn gay life of all time. Dude was a maniac, awesome figure skater. Now he's a figure skating commentator that gets to wear whatever he wants and do his style however he wants. That's like the pinnacle of like the dream job. Like he did it. Way to go, Johnny. J Dub for the win. Good for you, man. That's so exciting. <laughs> like, I was just, like, looking at it, and, like, he is saying some ridiculous shit. He is grinning from ear to ear. Like, this is the happiest dude on the one, planet. Man. He's probably he's probably winning Emmys for being a commentator. Like, like Charles. Charles says all types of ridiculous, random it's shit. It's so much fun. But it's he gets Emmys. And everybody else who's smart as shit up there with him gets nothing. It's entertainment. <laughs> Embrace exactly. the entertainment. You know what I'm saying? And Chuck understands that because he's probably smart for real. But he's like, bro, they don't want to hear smart. They want to hear this dumb shit I got to say. Oh, <laughs> dude. So the uh, real quick with the Russian figure skaters. So uh, they do in figure skating, they do a short program and a long program. And then the combined score is your overall victory. So you have two runs, basically. So after the first run, they had... Three of the ROC competitors and one, two, and three position. And then there's this Japanese chick that was in fourth. So um, what happened was the ROC athlete that was in first place tested positive for, you know, horse tranquilizers or whatever they give Russian, you know. Actually, it's like some weird speed concoction that they give them so they just have energy all the time it's bananas um so she tested positive the other two did not test positive for these things so there's a big hullabaloo about whether this chick was going to be able to compete or not and basically it was since she didn't she is 15 so they were basically saying like she didn't either didn't know what was going on or she was so young, it's not up to her to fight the powers that be. Somebody, a guardian, should have been looking after her. So it was a big thing. And the, the Olympic Committee is like, no. You cheat, you don't play. You know, you don't compete. Simple. You cheat, cool. you don't compete. However, man. whoever ruled the Athletics Commission, whatever, they said, it's not her fault. She's too young. Go ahead, let her go. So there, so the people on the Olympic Committee, including Johnny Weir and his, you know, uh, Elizabeth Banks counterpart, is I like know who none of these people are. Bro. Uh, Elizabeth Banks was is an actress who was the commentator in Pitch Perfect. They say ridiculous shit about all the the acapella groups. Anyway, they're just basically like any of the ROC chicks that come out here. Like, uh, yeah, they're pretty much all cheating. Like, uh, I don't even know what we're supposed to be doing. And then when the one chick that did get uh, busted for drugs or whatever came out, they, like, didn't say anything for a good minute. Like, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say anything at all. And they chose not to speak. It was pretty ridiculous. So then they have one chick who's super technical, one chick who's super artsy, 
And then the chick that got busted for drugs, who was supposed to be middle of the road, like, can kind of do a little bit of everything, whatever. But she wasn't even supposed to be the one that was the, the front runner. The technical chick goes first. She pulls off to, like, something that has never been done in competition before. And technically, like, nails it. But her transitions are awkward, like... I don't know, she looks like a baby deer trying to walk out there. It's weird, weird. But then when she's jumping and spinning, it's like, psh, on point. She gets extremely high marks. The artistic chick goes next, gets super high marks, gets in first place. Or maybe it was a Japanese chick, I don't remember. Then the chick that was in first goes last, and she ends up getting in fourth place. So nobody has to worry about her catching the podium, anything like that. So then they go to the back, and the chick that went first, that super technical, is flipping the fuck out, like screaming. Her teammate just won, and she's like, bullshit, I won. How is this? And, like, her teammate just won the gold medal, standing there, this little girl with nobody around her, because both the other chicks are freaking out. One, because she thought she should have won, and is like, absolutely not. This is not cool. I'm not even going on the podium. This is bullshit. <laughs> The other one, who was devastated that she missed the podium completely, even though she was in first. <laughs> and then the one that actually won is just this poor little girl, like, holding a teddy bear by herself. Not a producer came up to this little girl. Not a coach. Nobody. For, like, five minutes, this poor little girl is standing there all by herself. She just won the gold medal. And then her Good teammate is like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish her the best, though. Oh, <laughs> man. Fell so lowly at the top. That's what they say, bro. <laughs> Heavy is the head that wears the crown, man. Even for a 14-year-old girl or however old that chick was. There you go. Oh, so going from the Russians right to Medina Spirit, the Kentucky Derby winner got officially stripped of the title for that cheating scandal. Bullshit. And I'm not getting paid, even though second place technically wins now. The horse that I picked got second. I'm not getting paid off that old bet. Shit. It's bullshit, dude. Yeah, but the horse didn't do shit, so the horse shouldn't have to deal with the loss. Fucking jockey did the shit, so... No, the it's not the jockey. Be. It's the training staff and all that shit. The jockey yeah. just rides it, dude. It, like, horse jockeys... Yeah, he got suspended, too, and shit. Horse jockeys will ride, you know, six times in one day. So, it's not... They just, they go from track to track wherever the horses are and they, you know, they work with different teams and stuff like that and they, they ride different horses. Because that's the other thing, is those horses go in and out of races all the time. They get hurt, they're not ready to run, they're saving them for a different race, blah, 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 blah. So these jockeys just basically, they're freelance, show up to the track and they're like, okay, I'm going with you, going with you, going with you. They have their schedule all picked out. So it's not the jockey. They're just glorified drivers. That has to be oh, under five know, feet tall. Bullshit. The horse is just running. And he ran one. And then Bob Baffert's only suspended for like 90 days or some bullshit, which he's appealing. It's like, by the yeah, time racing's relevant again, like, horse racing's relevant again, he's going to be clear. As soon as they're up at Del Mar in uh, SoCal in early July, like, he's going to be there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he's filthy rich. He don't care. So. No, as well he shouldn't. Uh, do you care about Major League Baseball? Probably not. Start definitely not starting on time, but definitely not starting on time. And I still need to see what the my Red Sox were trying to make move before they shut shit down. We need to make moves. We missing pieces. We need a fucking another pitcher to our staff for sure. And we are probably gonna need some outfielders. But I heard we did get JBJ back. So before the shit went down, I believe I don't even know who that is. Jackie Bradley, baby. He sucks oh. at the plate, but he's great in the outfield. Motherfucker can play defense, but we let Hunter Renfro go. Somebody signed Hunter Renfro. He had like 32 homers for us this year. Like, Hunter what Renfro? Hell would be the... Yes. Oh. All right. Well, you he know. He had a good season for us. Yeah, man. but the Red Sox outfield kind of just goes <laughs> in and out. Like, they. Yeah, because they had three all stars and they got rid of all of them. How yeah, they tend to do that. that. It's not like that's. The first time they do that, they retool their outfield every, like, two or three years. We won the championship, and you got rid of three guys who were all-stars. It's I like, didn't. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye. John Henry's like, oh, we don't want to pay Mookie, and if we're not going to pay Mookie, then fuck the rest well, of them. Well, then we guys. definitely aren't going to pay these other guys. <laughs> Peace out. 
Did you know that the Cleveland Indians low key changed their name and didn't tell anybody? They changed their name and logo, right? Yeah. To the Cleveland Guardians, but it's not even it's not even official if they're gonna start this season as the Cleveland Guardians or not. Like how weird is that? You change your name and then you're like, eh, but not yet. Guardian Commando. Oh the Commanders. They should yeah, have been the commandos. That's way anything better. To do with, anything to do with the Indians, you're gonna probably have to change it. Sorry to say. Even though they probably don't give two flying fucks. No, yeah, I'm sure but they do. That's it. They don't care. That's what they're people like say about black actually, people. No, they're, they're <laughs> who actually came out and like backed the Redskins and were like trying to fight for them not to change their name. So there are people who definitely damn, probably because they're like, listen. We don't have any fucking teams or logos. Even if you're going to shit on us, at least it's something. Don't take that away from us. No, because it's like, oh, y'all want to fight for us now, but how about you, what are you standing up for us when you were taking out fucking land and all this other shit? Don't act like you care now. It's stupid. Yeah. It's fucking counterproductive, my guy. Well, I mean, are we going to turn over all the land and stuff? <laughs> I, don't mm, I don't think shit. so. <laughs> we, man, you should have at least let them pick the name. Be like all the Native American tribes and land, you know, everybody that has their land, you all vote, whatever name you pick. If you call them, they should have been the Washington Crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking DC's just full of politicians. Should have been the Washington Crackers. You know, DC was once called Chocolate City, bro. They would have never named the team the Crackers, my God. They were once the Bullets. <laughs> I don't know how they got away with that shit for so long. <laughs> Until they became the, you know when they took the name away, when they became the murder capital of the world. Like yeah. if they would have just stayed on second or third place, well, they probably would still be the bullets. Oh, but you man. wanted you wanted the number one spot, huh? You killing motherfuckers. <laughs> oh god, that's so bad, dude. Oh shit. All right, well, since we went on a shitty NBA break, which the NBA's kind of been trash this lately anyway it hasn't been that great leading up to the all-star break honestly no this is when the nba actually i started paying attention so that yeah but considering have you uh watched anything else recently or have you just been finally like coming down oh, football I've hangover watching, I've been watching a lot of different shit this week bro. yeah oh shit what do we got yeah we got fucking toilet twin tender swindler did you watch that? Yes, I did, buddy. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and then they have another one from a female version. It's like Interesting Anna or something. Like Inventing Anna. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, too. Yeah, that one is where... So, Tinder Swindler, tell me about that one. So, that one's just about a dude that creates fake accounts and just is like... Takes all these broads so for all their money, all right? All their money. Like yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the investigating Anna is basically like uh, I'm just starting that so, but she's like kind of getting people for their money too. Just the woman version. So. Yeah, the woman version of a con artist, but yeah. the, in that one, it's actually instead of like a documentary style, that one is actually like tells the story of the journalist that's investigating this person or whatever, something like that. Yeah, and then, okay. what's the name of the other show that is similar to those? But this dude, they trying to get locked up. Oh no! That one's the somebody. puppet master. That's the one that. That's the one that you told. That's the one okay, that I, I want to fuck this dude up. Yeah, yeah and that's that. honestly, you did watch that. Yes. How do you feel <laughs> about it? Is, they're fucking fool. Like, so yes, you initially you feel bad for them, right? <laughs> that's initially. But then when you realize, like, these are grown people who continue to go for this stupid shit, <laughs> you don't feel bad for them no more. You're like, uh, yeah, you're just dumb. So yes. I'm not gonna feel bad for you anymore. I don't feel and bad for so, them, but do you admit <laughs> that this guy is a piece of shit? He's a piece. I'm never. He's never gonna change from being a piece of shit. But yeah. I don't feel bad for them either. Like, bro, you can't get. Stop letting the piece of shit get you with the bullshit. Like, that's you're just stuff. And then I watching. I didn't know there was a new season. Of fucking of of um, what's my show? Snowfall. <sighs> no. Oh, by the way, that's back too. For the money, um, house guests, um, Big Brother. Damn. There you go. Oh, oh shit. So Celebrity Big Brother with some fucking weirdos on oh, there. Celebrity Big Brother. Fuck. And Lamar's on there, man. Lamar's Odom's on there. And oh, Seth man. Anderson. See, I don't want to watch that. You know I don't want to watch that train wreck, dude. I do not want to see that. Yeah, so that's four new things I've been watching this week. So I've been kind of like getting my 
damn, I still haven't watched Ray Donovan. Talk. So, so all right, so what? what so what? <laughs> all right, so what out of those four things would you recommend the most, and which would you go? Yeah. Maybe stay away from. Which one would I recommend the most? Twinder Swindler, bro. Like that is yeah. <laughs> Twinder Swindler is the shit. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna watch it then because I wasn't going to because I had just come off the Puppet Master thing and I'm like, you know what? And the reason why I can laugh now because it's the same as the other thing, Puppet Master thing. Like, yeah, how are y'all even still falling for this? Like, bro, like how do you fall for these like these far fisher story? Like these like bro, the twin the Tinder Swindler dude. Like, <laughs> Like he's getting girls to send him hundreds of thousands of dollars while he using and the fact that he's meeting people in person. So some of the girls he actually sees in person, and so he's using the other girls' money to show them this lavish life. Yeah. So when he's no longer with them, they know he can afford the lavish life. So when he asks them for money, he's already got it in their mind that he has it and can give it back. So these fools are gone. Like they're gone. There's no way that they don't. It's pyramid scheme one hundred and one. Pyramid scheme. Hey, yo, he's scheming in the hell out these people bro it's like wrestlers but you I like fake the way, until you make it I like it. the way the reason why is because it comes full circle unlike Puppet Master so just yeah. watch it it's Twitter, 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 okay Twitter, yeah because Puppet Twitter. Master just kind of left like right as it got good it was like and then we're done you know it was like making a murder all over again you're like wait what what happened and I gotta start Love is Blind season 2 baby I saw that was on there I couldn't remember if that was one that you watched or not Yes, I do, my guy. All right, so is Love is Blind a, a like a brand new cast, or is this like a reboot, or what's going on with I'm it? I guess it, I don't know. I haven't watched any All of right. it, but it's season two, and I'm presuming it's a brand new cast. All right, maybe I'll jump into that. So I will say, uh, I, I think I've been watching stuff, but I really don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think I've been, like, pulling back on smoking weed, so I don't think that's it. I just think I just don't really remember what I watch anymore. But I did watch Ali Wong stand up, which was good. Um, it was really good, solid. Um, I will say <clears throat> there was one thing that tantalized my interest at Alamo Draft House was we saw the trailers for new movies coming out, and usually I don't really care about those because the ones that they show in the theater are not movies that I really want to see. However, they're coming out with a new Nick Cage movie. I don't even know who that is, bro. You don't know who Nicolas Cage is, you dick. Yes, you do. <laughs> Not probably off the top of my head. You say, like, oh, what, what movie? The I'm Rock, yeah, Con Air, Face Off. Those are ones that you would have seen. I've seen Face Off. I ain't seen Con Air. What? Conair, dude. Song, though, so I know you should see Conair. Conair is a fucking great dude flick. It's beautiful, and The Rock is awesome. Have you not seen The Rock? There is too many white people in there, though. But yeah, Face Off. He's not John Travolta, but he kind of is. That hmm. one. So anyway, Nick Cage, if you don't know, is extremely outlandish, wild, made a bunch of shitty movies. Nobody can understand why. He buys castles and, like, dinosaur eggs and weird shit. And he's always, like, in trouble with the IRS and all this kind of shit. So basically what they did was they took Nick Cage and they said, Nick, we'll give you the money that you need, but we're going to make a movie about how batshit crazy your life is. And you play yourself. And he goes, done! So he's going to play himself as like a tuned up version of like all the crazy outlandish shit that he's ever done. Like they're going to wrap it up into a movie and it's going to be awesome. I highly, highly recommend getting inebriated and going Ubering or taking a ride share to the theater and enjoying that. I don't know how crazy his life is, but it sounds like it could be interesting. Maybe I'll give it a... It's going to be one of those like slapsticky, silly... Like, what the fuck is going on here? Did he really do that? And then, yeah, it turns out he did. It's going to be hilarious. I can't wait for it. It's the Nick Cage movie everybody's been waiting for. If you like Nick Cage. I still can't believe you haven't seen Con Air. That's a must watch. I might, I might have to add it to my rotation with that and Ray Donovan. Dude, it's like a, it's like a solid hour and 35, hour and 45 minutes. Mostly action with some silly dialogue. And I mean, 
these hardcore prisoners take over a transport plane. <laughs> How is that not awesome? Ving Rhames is in it. John Malkovich are the two main bad guys that take He's over the plane. Take over a transfer plane. It's awesome. Cannot believe you oh. haven't seen Con Air, dude. I'm interested in that. And by the way, it also came out when I was like, I don't know, twelve. Like the absolute perfect PG thirteen movie to come out at that time. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Maybe it was rated R. It probably should be. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, well, if you're not watching Con Air, then at least perk up your ear holes for this week's Spotify playlist, because this week we're coming with Big K-R-I-T and the Black Keys. What you think about that, Mike? Keys, so I'm going to have to give them a uh, big crit. I'm a fan, so I've always been a fan. never heard the Black Keys, so I'm going to have to give it a listen. See, when you play people, I don't have to, I've never heard, I have to give it a listen, because I need to listen to them. Well, especially if you crit, like crit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Crit fan, so shout out to Crit. He don't Dude, get the respect he deserves. His new album just dropped last week. It's it's in fuego, dude. It's so good. It is so good. No, and Crit's been good for a while. If you want any insight into Mike as a person, I would suggest you listen to uh, the song off his new album, Boring. That describes Mike pretty well. Gotcha. I'm going to go listen. And if you want another opinion. song that describes me pretty well, Ride Wave. All right. Abandon. That's my song, man. That's your song for right now, or it's been that for a while? Since it came out. Like, Abandon by Ride Wave is literally, like, a great song. Great song for me. Like, theme song. All right. I'm going to fire it up as soon as we're done here and I start editing. There you go. Give it a listen, man. All right. And if you want to know a little insight into me, you can listen to the Hokey Pokey. That's uh, that's kind of my jam. <laughs> so <laughs> on that note, no matter what you're listening to, at least listen to us and be sure to share. Follow us on Instagram at Black Irish Pod, at Black Irish 213 for Mike, at Brendan Dallas 7 for me. In the meantime, you must love each other. Give somebody a hug that you haven't hugged oh, in a man. while. It's going to feel you good. Go. Just turn to your right, turn to your left, hug whoever next to you, man. They look, if they're sitting there, what if you're in a jail you, cell? Hug, you. hug that person too. It's all good. I might you're send mixed messages. A... You might get Shawshanked. Y'all are in there for a while together, man. Show some love. <laughs> Make the most of your situation. You're not in yeah, jail, yeah. probably. Love each other. There you go. On that this note. This is our last episode before we go out, so let me make sure I say last one last time. Happy Black History Month. We will see y'all in March. Because we only get 28 days. But anyway, have a good one, my people. Happy Black History Month. Stay strong. Later. <laughs> <laughs>